Am I the a-hole for losing my temper at sister-in-law after she ruined the meal I made? Plus update. My sister-in-law Ashley is, for lack of a nicer word, obnoxious. She constantly does whatever she wants, even when you ask her not to. She thinks she's right above everyone else, even when she's dead wrong. And she's just got this very stereotypical baby sister attitude, where she acts like she can do whatever she wants and nobody's allowed to be mad at her because she's baby. Yes, that's something she regularly says. My husband says she's the youngest of their family, so her acting that way is normal. But I pointed out I'm the youngest of my family, and I've never acted that way. I don't like sister-in-law, but I've been polite and kept a peaceful relationship for my husband's sake. Until today. Today was the first time since 2019 that my husband or I have been able to see our small friend group in person. We all got our shots two months ago and decided to meet up finally for dinner. I cooked while our friends either pitched in ingredients, made appetizers, or brought wine. I made some pasta ravioli by hand, which was hard. I made enough for me, Hubs, and our friends. But after they arrived and we all caught up while I was finishing the food, sister-in-law showed up. She let herself in and greeted everyone happily. They know her and said hi, but I subtly asked Hubs what she was doing here. Turns out, he'd mentioned the gathering to her, but he guessed she assumed she was invited? I told him to tell her to leave, because she can't just invite herself like this. He said that would be humiliating for her and asked if she could stay. I was annoyed, but agreed. Things were fine at the start. I had a few sips of wine to relax and was about to plate everyone's food at the kitchen island and bring it to them, but forgot parmesan so I went to get it. I heard sister-in-law say she'd help bring the food to the table. I said no thanks and to stay seated. My back was to her, and she said something I missed because of the loud clang of a pot hitting the floor. I heard everyone gasp, and I closed my eyes. I knew what happened but didn't want to look. When I did, I just started crying. Hours of work splattered on the floor. Sister-in-law said it was okay, that it was just pasta, I'll buy more. I lost it. I called her a stupid witch that ruined the entire dinner because she refuses to listen. She started boo-hooing, and I told her to shut up and leave. She ran out crying, and I sat down to cry too. Our friends consoled me, but husband tried to say I went too far. But our friends told him he was a nahal and sister-in-law wasn't wrong. They helped clean and we ordered pizza. But after they left, Hubs and I were flooded with calls from his family saying I was a horrible spoiled brat who made their baby cry over some stupid food. Now I'm just crying and feeling like a garbage. Did I go too far? I don't usually get so angry or curse. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Hub said he understands I'm upset that the food was wasted, but he doesn't think my outburst was warranted and was actually kind of extreme. Tomorrow's his off day, and I told him he's going to be making the dish like I did, by hand and on his own, and then at the end we'll see if he thinks my outburst was unwarranted. Now for the top comments before reading the update. You're the a-hole, but justified a-hole. From her perspective and her brother's, your husband's, you went nuclear. She's highly entitled and been brought up this way. You can't change her. And from your story, her family still continues to encourage her. Maybe she's clumsy. Maybe she spilled it on purpose. But either way, you're not going and spoiled food. This may not be your hill to die on, but if she glamours and being the baby, play along. Oh no, no wine for you, you're still a baby. No thanks, I don't need help. This is a big girl thing, maybe when you're bigger. Sorry, this dinner's for grown-ups and you're a baby. I'm incredibly petty though. This actually made me smile a bit. Thanks. Part of me really wants to do that to her. See how long she lasts before she throws a tantrum. Well, if she throws a tantrum, that typically means the baby needs to go down for a nap or maybe a bottle. Made their baby cry? She needs a serious wake-up call. And if she cried over it, then good. She needs to get some consequences. My kid sister is the youngest, and she's mature, thoughtful, and courteous. There's no reason for sister-in-law to be doing this. Not a day haul. Not a day haul. You overreacted in a moment of high temper, but she inserted herself into a dinner uninvited, disregarded the hostess's wishes, and then downplayed her disaster. You had every right to be upset, and she decided to then turn the family against you. She's the a-hole. I don't usually flip out like that. I'm very level-headed, but seeing my hours of hard work dumped on the floor just broke me. Update. Welp, Hubs made pasta for the first time today. 
and it went much like I'd anticipated. He was all confidence that it'll be easy during the first thirty minutes, but towards the end of the first hour, that disappeared as the burn in his arms really set in for making enough dough for almost sixty ravioli. I did not lift a finger to help him knead, since I didn't get any help when I did it. After the dough was done and wrapped up in the fridge, he made a filling, which took another forty or so minutes. Then the dough was brought out, and he had to start crafting the ravioli all by hand after rolling the dough out. Lord, that went on for ages. Just rolling some dough out, cutting out squares, filling them, and putting the top on, rinse and repeat until the dough and filling was all gone. All in all, the entire process from start to finish for him on his own took a little over four hours. That's with us not actually cooking any of the ravioli. Also, he didn't make any sauce or cook any shrimp for the ravioli to be served in slash with. Also, he didn't prepare any salad to go with it. And when I told him this, that there was still more to do, he almost started crying. He started saying sorry at the one hour mark and hasn't stopped apologizing since. We had a long talk about a sister and the dinner she ruined, and the other time she spilled similar incidents. There's a lot, and how him and his family always let her get away with it. He says he knows how they treat her isn't normal and he doesn't like it, but was raised to just go with the flow regarding Ashley. But he said he's going to call her and tell her we need some space from her now. More update: Hubs just got a message from his cousin of Ashley laughing. And bragging about intentionally spilling the pasta to teach me a lesson for being such a snobby witch. A handful of you all thought she did it on purpose, but I didn't actually think she did until hearing her admit to it. I have never seen my husband this pissed off before. I don't know what's going to happen now. Next story is titled, "Am I the a-hole for breaking up my brother and his girlfriend?" My brother has been quite financially successful in life. He has been dating his girlfriend Gia for about two years now, but she honestly earns probably ten percent of what my brother makes. However, they split costs evenly on everything, which would of course be fine, except that my brother wants her to move in with him and pay rent. I have become pretty good friends with Gia, and she told me she was upset because my brother wants her to pay half the mortgage and utilities, etc., which she absolutely cannot afford as it's a very expensive house. This isn't a one-time issue either. My brother has developed champagne tastes, but expects her to pay half the cost of these tastes that she literally cannot afford. They both then came to me about it together because I think they felt I was a neutral party in some ways. Basically, I was blunt with them. I said they need to discuss financials and that any healthy couple would have to confront how to approach earnings if they want to continue long term. Either A, my brother needs to shoulder more cost, or B, they need to spend less, including on housing. My brother made it clear those were not options he would accept, so I said the simplest solution is not moving together. But they'll need to address this issue at some point, or accept they're not actually expecting to be together long term. Basically, GF took the last point to heart and felt that my brother wasn't serious about a relationship if he couldn't compromise on the issue. And now my brother is furious with me and told our family broke them up by telling GF to date a guy who will spend money on her. My family's now pissed at me too. And brother calls GF and be gold diggers. I'm a lawyer and earn the same as husband for context. Here's especially where I think I'm the a-hole. I told brother the only one who cares about marrying someone with money is him, and he's the greedy gold digger who will never be happy because he cares more about money than people he loves. I hate that I said that because my point with GF wasn't even the money. It was that brother created an impossible situation for GF and refused to compromise or be flexible. Which is necessary for a lasting relationship. Family is demanding an apology for everything, so now I'd really appreciate a third-party opinion on whether I'm the a-hole or if I have a warped view on relationships and finances. Not the a-hole. Good for you looking out for the GF. I hope she finds someone better. Agreed. But O.B. who told your family what happened? You or him? Because if he was the one who told your family, he lied. Or at the very least, spun what happened to make himself sound better. Don't accept this. Fight back. Go around to the family and ask them what your brother told them, and then tell them the truth. Unless your entire family is like your brother, they shouldn't all be on his side. Not today, Hall. Not today, Hall. At all. Don't you dare apologize. Your brother and GF came to you for advice. You gave them excellent advice, which the GF took to heart. Then brother misrepresented your contribution for sympathy for mothers. Your brother sounds like a shallow, materialistic person, and everything you said to him is totally correct. 
stand your ground. Not today, Hong. You're absolutely right. Your brother is so concerned with avoiding gold diggers that he's insisting his partner drown financially trying to keep up with his expensive tastes. Either he should have split costs proportionally or lowered the living costs to meet her level. If he wants a more expensive place slash restaurant slash etc., he should be willing to cover the extra. His own behavior and refusal to compromise is what ended the relationship. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister to get over the sexist mix-up of her twins' names? My sister is really upset, but honestly, I don't know what I did wrong. She had her twin boy and girl in November of 2020. She named them unisex names. Peyton is the boy and Mike is the girl. I never really thought much of it and didn't think it was a big deal. My sister, however, gets extremely upset when people mix up the twins' names. She told me she got upset at the nurse that called them into one of their first doctor's appointments because she assumed Peyton's name was Micah and vice versa. I raised an eyebrow at that but didn't say anything. Since then, she's gotten into countless dumb arguments about the mix-ups, some I've been present for. For example, once my friend was over at my house when my sister stopped over with the twins, and when my friend and I were holding them and I had told their names, she accidentally called Micah Peyton when she was complimenting her. My sister audibly sighed loud and made a big show of taking her baby and saying that she hates that people are so sexist and mix up her kids' names. A friend and I were so confused, but we just brushed it off because she left soon after and laughed about it. This happened yesterday, when our old grandmother was over at our house and accidentally thought Micah was named Peyton. My sister snapped at her rudely and I got mad. I told her to not get upset our almost 90-year-old grandmother mixed up her great-grandchildren's names. My sister said it's dumb, that the names are unisex, and if she clearly states who's who, then people need to call them the names accordingly. I told her it's an innocent mistake and not meant to be malicious. She said it's sexist, and that she hates that people are constantly making that mistake and brushing it off like it's not harmful. I told her to get used to it, because it's probably gonna happen for the rest of their lives and to stop complaining, and that since they're twins, their names will always be put together and people will assume the more feminine name is the girls and the more masculine name is the boys. She said that thinking is sexist and I'm a Neha enabler. Now for the top comments. Okay, so if your sister is so adamant that they're unisex, then why would you think it's sexist if they call the wrong one the wrong name? She either obviously and on purpose named them backward to be woke or make a point. Are they unisex and in that case, it's acceptable and expected that some people will confuse them as either name could apply to either child. They can't be both unisex and wrong sex applied at the same time. And second point, I call my kid the dog's name and the dog my kid's name and they're not even the same species. Right? The sister is arguing against her own logic. She did this on purpose. Also, I can't tell how many times my parents have said a wrong name by accident. Sometimes they call me my sister's name, but every once in a while they go through the whole family, including my brothers. It happens. Not the a-hole. She knew what she was doing when she chose those exact names, and it almost seems like she's taking some pleasure in the fact that she gets to huff and puff and correct people with their horrid sexist attitudes. I'm actually shocked people think that, because honestly, I've heard both names used as boy and girl names. We live in California. I'm not sure if it's regional or not. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not offering to house my sister's family in my new, huge house? I'm male 31, am single and child-free. For the past few years, I've been house hunting, and during 2020 was offered to buy my great-grandmother's farmhouse. It's about an hour away, almost 80 years old, needs a lot of tender loving care and comes with about 15 acres. Originally, I declined, but my grandma offered it at a steal to keep it in the family. The price was worth the land alone, and I loved the idea of restoring it, so I said yes. The house has six bedrooms, which sounds like a lot, but they're actually very small. The plan is to turn four rooms into two rooms and a bath, one room kept as the master, and the sixth room is actually the dining area that will become a part of the living area. The one great thing is the kitchen is huge and has an outdoor extension like a mudroom. I've recently started construction on the rooms and have gotten some odd reactions from my family. My mother believes I should have kept the house as is, and when I pried, she admitted she thought I'd offer the house my sister's family. My sister, female 34, has three kids, female 11, female 9, and male 3, 
and a deadbeat ex-husband. They divorced after her three-year-old was born and my sister moved in with my mom. Our parents are divorced, so dad is not a part of this. My sister's husband moved back to his family's state and only sees the kids a few times a year. The child support is not much because he has a low-paying job. My mom's house is a three-bedroom. My nieces share a room while my nephew sleeps with his mom. My sister has a job and could rent her own apartment, but wants to save up money instead. My cousin's son, male 15, has started staying as well and sleeps on the couch as his family life is not all that great right now. The house is cramped, but my mother refuses to ask her to leave, and they have started making passive-aggressive comments about me being single and alone in such a huge house. When I asked my sister, she also admitted that she expected to at least be offered to live with me. I told her it's an hour away from her job at school. Why would she want to? She then said she would make the drive to work and change the kids' schools. I told her I won't have the space, and now it has become a fight. My sister got my great-grandma involved, and now my grandma told me I should let them live with me because the house is family property. Now even my 15-year-old cousin is asking about staying with me. So am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. One is never responsible for their family's situation. You are not obligated legally or morally to house your family. Stick to your guns, because if you let them in, they may never leave. And a sister expected Opie to at least offer for the sister's family to move in, meaning she also had some wild expectation that with some luck, Opie would offer the entire house outright. Opie, your sister would take over your house if you let them anywhere near it. Continue with what sounds like really awesome renovation plans, and whistle away from your mom and sister when they start up the discussion again. Not today, home. Once you bought the house, it was no longer family property. It's your property, and you get to decide who lives there. Not today, home. If it's family property, they can start coving up money for rent, renovation, and taxes. Your family is apparently full of entitled losers. If I were you, I'd sell the house honestly and tell them it's because they won't stop bothering you.